It creates an upward spiral, and, and part of it begins with me, that it, as my staff know that I trust them, and they have staff similarly that feel trusted by their supervisor, they've earned that trust and they go out and do that job, their confidence and their ability to do their work and know that they have their support of their supervisors allows them to go out and do great things. You know, picture yourself in a work sitting, setting where uh, you didn't feel trusted by your boss. Did you try to do anything extra? Did you really try to contribute? There was always this sense of uh, they're, they're going to catch me doing something. The one mistake I make is the one that they're going to they're going to seize upon. I don't want that environment. I want to go the other way with it. You know, because what happens then is is that you're bearing changes. If you're trusted by your boss, you go out into the community. You just carry yourself differently. And so your interactions with folks, they're like, you know, I just can't help it. I like that deputy. She's a great lady. You know, I like that deputy. He's a great guy. Well, we're, part of that comes from they're trusted by their boss to deliver. And, and so you end up with an upward spiral because you know how that is. is if someone trusts you, all of a sudden you don't, you don't want to lose that. And so when you have community interactions and you go to a community meeting and the residents there clearly trust you as a law enforcement officer, you're not going to let them down. You're going to work harder. And they're going to sense that, saying, boy, you know what? I really like deputy so-and-so because she is committed. I can't really put my finger on it, but I just know that she is. And I really like her and I support her. And they engage in their community more because they know that it matters to this deputy. And so you end up with this upward spiral. So it's, it's uh, my hope that, you know, in my area of influence, that I can create that environment. Transition period after the election, um, I, did a, I did several things. Um, I spent time with all of uh, Sheriff Fletcher's administrative staff, all his appointed staff, and there's about 10 or 11 members. And I sat with them and I asked them uh, a series of things. I, I, just give you the four questions that I asked. One was, tell me about yourself. And they could choose to personal, professional, they could tell me whatever they wanted. I asked them, are there some improvements that you're most proud, of which you're most proud, that you participated in at the sheriff's office? Then I asked them, are there some things that you hope don't change? And my reason for asking that question was to uh, determine, are there some things that are really working that the new guy shouldn't mess with when he gets there? And then the last part I asked was, can you think of ways that we can improve service to the community or the work environment for our employees? And I used that as the template uh, for the following eight weeks before I was sworn in to visit with the senior staff, the mid-management staff, the non-appointed, but the command staff, and then all, and then all of the sergeants. Wow. Um, so that gave me several different things. It told me, Here's the things that are working. When I say, what do you hope doesn't change? Really, they told me, here's what, here's what seems to be working and what we have for, you know, the community really likes, that the community really likes from us. Um, and then they gave me an amazing list of things that we could do to improve our service and improve our work environment. And that, and it was interesting as you talk to more and more people, for those that have ever done focus group types of things, you start to see some patterning and clustering of, of things that uh, we could begin work on. So that, that ended up becoming the architecture. It confirmed many things that I thought we would want to improve, but it'll, because I listened to them, uh, they were quite ready to engage too because they could sense from me that, that was, we had shared values on those topics. So, so that was the human contact that I had, and that was my reason for doing that in advance of being sworn in. Um, second was to do an inventory of those that you know, had a shared vision. You know, try to be a good manager and put the round peg in the round hole. Um, and so I had an opportunity to do some orientation types of things during the time I was elected and uh, actually sworn into the office. And uh, so that I was able to look at each of the different aspects of the sheriff's department. And so I think that smoothed it a great deal. As far as there are lots of paperwork being left down and folders for me to read, no, there wasn't any of that. But that's okay. I had the information I needed. <laughs> but there had to be some things that you didn't expect. Well, you know, there are things that I've learned at a much deeper level, and then there were a few surprises, and I will say most of the surprises have been positive. Um, things that I've learned is um, just how important um, that detention feature is to our society. You know, that when someone really on their worst day is the day they get it, that for that person, that's their absolute worst day. And to meet the men and women that are serving as our detention,
retention officers and their commitment to excellence and that uh, to I totally impressed me. Um, they, they're not passive in any way and, and that they, are continu they continue to see each person come through as an individual. And, and that's what I would want because then you're going to render great care and that people aren't going to, you know, you don't have medical issues that people that might otherwise have some mental health issues are going to be attended to promptly. So I want to continue to uh, improve that environment and, and make sure that the men and women serving there understand that that's a core function and that's changing lives in the way that we do that. Because if, if that experience uh, gets them to never come back again, even though it, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was unpleasant, but they were safe, there were people there that cared about them, and the way to show that they cared is you don't come back again. That's, that's exactly what we want to do is position them so that they don't return. That was an amazing thing, the, the whole detention uh, cycle. So I learned a lot there, continue to learn more, uh, and it is, a, it is some that would look at the budget, a very big piece of the Sheriff's Office budget is in detention. Another surprise uh, in a positive one, is that for, and I don't know how to say it, it's, it's redundant, but uh, cops are cops. And so whether they're wearing brown or they're wearing blue, um, when they have a boss that they feel are they're trusted and their boss gets them what they need and pays attention but stays out of the way, they flourish. And what I found is the men and women at the Sheriff's Department are doing just that. They're going to their positions and they feel like they're trusted they feel like their boss cares about them, and they are working very, very hard and delivering great service. So that has been very, very positive. You always wonder in a political environment with, uh, with an election, um, what love, because this, for many of them, it's really the first time that they met me. You know, how, how could they ever trust me? So I know that I have, will have to continue to earn their trust, and the things that I've said here, I maintain and continue to be consistent at. Um, but I think some of them are already giving me a chance, and that's what I ask, just give me one chance. And uh, they're committing themselves to um, doing exactly what they came there to do, and that was to uphold the law, do it fairly and impartially, and deliver great service. And that has been not just positive, it's exciting, it excites me. Um, I think, I feel like what I've merely done is try to effectively articulate what I believe to be is great public safety, and great public service. What does that look like? And then try to lead and administer, commiserate with, with those objectives. My challenge during a debate is, is I, you know, it, not a debate, but uh, it is in a conversation during a political race, is how do I articulate any of those things in a, in a way that won't pe make people yawn? And, and that was the part that amazed me the most, is that as I described where I saw the sheriff's office and the possibilities there, uh, men and women said, it was as if that's exactly what I was thinking. And so the timing has a lot to do with this too, that the time is right for, I think, the way that I see delivering public service. I think there's a lot of folks, regardless of political party, that's how they wanted to administer. Because, and that gives them comfort to go out and do all these other great things. And, and uh, I'm glad to do that. The other thing that I've seen happen too is that these uh, sheriff, the, 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 the chiefs, in knowing that they have the support of the sheriff, and that if they ever had, it, if they ever needed anything, if they ever had any difficulties, they would have one call for help, and they know that we'd be there, and we'd be there in a way with the most professional men and women that we have in the county to come and help them. Just the knowledge that they can make that phone call um, has given them additional confidence to do some innovative things in their community. And so with that in mind, I think we're on the front end of what's going to be a very exciting time um, in Ramsey County. And, and, and part of what I think also happens then is, is our surrounding counties, uh, Pinoca, Washington, Hennepin, Dakota, um, are, are going to get a sense of, boy, you've got some pretty innovative police chiefs and, and you're working with the Sheriff's Department. How does that all come together? And they're going to, I think, we're going to have a chance to take some of the best of what we're doing, and there's going to be, uh, if, if, if
copying is the greatest form of flattery, there's probably going to be some other counties that tap into doing what we're doing, saying that really works. And in the same fashion, we've got some very good sheriffs around us in Washington County, Anoka County, Dakota County, Hennepin County, where they're doing some very innovative things. And so together, I, this is just an amazing time to be sheriff.